Jeremy's going to be part of a group show called Texter that is happening in October this year. And part of my curatorial ethos in going into this show was kind of prompted by a whole lot of artists in Sydney using Texters as the basis of their medium. And there usually is a very personal nature to the reason why artists choose Texters as their medium. Your practice um, from 2013 to 2019 used colour in a very sparse way, but also a way that was um, very differently rendered. So in your practice here, you've made these beautiful, colourful works, but this is probably the beginning of when you started using textures predominantly in your practice, which has kind of expanded out into these beautiful, colourful, lyrical pieces that you see at Sydney libraries. So can you walk me through this work, kind of why you decided that you wanted to become an artist that works in texture and what texture means to you as a medium? Well, I think it's already been spoken about so eloquently by Melinda and Beata and other people that drawing's always been seen as the bottom of this hierarchy. You know, you've got oil painting at the top and then acrylic and you go down to uh, drawing and drawing was always the preparatory work for something else. But I think particularly in modern times, it's become its own medium, its own sort of world and there's definitely this renaissance of drawing happening in terms of the textures i feel like textures are even lower than drawing you know people <laughs> always look down on textures as children playing with color you know it's it's got this kind of unfinished quality to it it's very um it's very quick again mm. but what i like about textures is the sort of unrealistic color element they're very kind of bright they're almost kind of frenetic Almost sickly sometimes yeah, as well. A bit, yeah, a bit overwhelming. The sort of I use some highlighters as well. That's like highlighter yellow, which mm. is really garish. And that was, mm. you know, in this sort of psychological map of gay men's psychology, I wanted to get that kind of frenetic, sort of everything everywhere all at once yeah. kind of internet of things kind of mm. going on. And there is that like potent psychedelic vibrancy that comes through in this work. And it's also this like very... Um, very measured work in kind of the history of map making and there is this like kind of flow through various iconographies and such and it's a very symbolic piece as well hyper detailed and i i would like you to perhaps um for the audience describe some of the stories that you've embedded in this work so i should mention that this is a digital print that the original was purchased by the state library for their lgbt archive in 2021 and it was actually a COVID drawing. So I'm sure all of us have had COVID artworks. And when you look at them, they inspire certain feelings. For me, this was started in the first lockdown, finished in the second. So it really was a, a year long drawing. Um, and I went deep into my own psychology for this work. I was obviously inspired by my hero, Grayson Perry, who I got to meet at MCA once and he's amazing. And I love map making. I love hyper detail works. It's actually an island, you probably can't sort of see, but there's a sort of shore around it. And it was primarily from reading this very famous book called uh, The Velvet Rage by Alan Downs, who's an American PhD psychologist. And basically, he talks about these three stages of gay men's psychology from coming out of the closet to seeking validation to seeking authenticity at the end. And it really struck me as a, as a gay man that journey and that process. I'm probably still in the seeking validation phase. I haven't quite reached the sum of authenticity yet. <laughs> but I wanted to create a map that really spoke about the beauty, the horror, the, the fears, mm. the joys of all of it. So you've yeah. got in the center sort of city of sex and love. You've got pleasure, party land. You've got never, never land. You've got the Tower of Babel of generations. You've got well of loneliness and ex-boyfriends as Titanic. <laughs> You've got Prep Castle, which is an anti-HIV um, amazing drug. You've got Straight Island, this kind of Pleasantville, perfect suburbia. Mm. Um, you've got the land of the closet, which is this horrific, the, the, was, yeah. the, the shoes and Dante's Gates of Hell and the Scream. And I just always, I just collect images from all different kind of art, mm. you know, literary images. Um, comic books, anything, I'm not, I like to break down those barriers. So it's got a lot of 
iconography, yeah. even Leonardo's uh, drawing of a, of a fetus as well. And you got to see some of um, the maps that you've taken inspiration from <coughs> in, in the flesh at the State Library after they acquired yes. your work. So yeah. what are some of those works and um, how, how do those, the language of maps in that sense um, come into your um, drawing? Well, I've always been a map nerd. I just love maps, but I don't like yeah. maps in the traditional sense. Traditionally, we think of maps as A to B, but I like sort of controversially medieval maps, which are extremely <coughs> old. And those maps were a map of everything, particularly there's a very famous map, the Hereford Mappa Mundi, which means is Latin for map of everything. And in that map, it was the entire world. And you'd have, you know, Jerusalem at the center. It would actually face north and you'd have monsters and creatures you'd have it, it was psychological it was spiritual it was sort of demented it was this really crazy psychological landscape and it wasn't geographic at all and so I was inspired in that regard to sort of subvert traditional cartographic techniques obviously cartography has been very colonial and imperial and all about power and I wanted to reclaim that and sort of queer that form yeah. of yeah. And I think detail is also an aspect to your work, which is like just imbued in the fact that like some of this line work, you could come in with a microscope and kind of like um, pick apart some of the various details. Um, but you're also in Draw Space going to be curating a show on detail in yes. March next year. March next year, yes. So in March next year, uh, <coughs> this show on detail, who are some of the artists that you've approached and um, what is the, I guess, curatorial premise as far as that's concerned? Um, so I've been doing drawing for over a decade and it's been the primary focus of my practice, particularly detailed drawing. So I've collected basically my favorite detailed drawers that I know, the people I've admired for years. Um, Todd Fuller, Catherine O'Donnell, Eva Noland, Andrew Nichols, a whole host of other ones as well. So there's about 10 or 12 of us. And I was inspired by this idea that, you know, drawing is known for its immediacy. You can do, you know, drawings very, very quickly. But then a lot of artists love the fine detail that drawing can bring. You know, painting, it's very difficult to get to that fine level of detail, but drawing, because it's so precise can allow you to get there and I was also interested in the ideas of labor and time and how you know you can go from a very quick drawing to a, a year-long drawing so they're the themes that I'm interested in I'm gonna um, have all these artists give artists talks as well but uh, I love all their practices and um, I think there's something a little bit neurotic you know people describe yeah. my work as anal or a bit OCD and I, I like that kind of you know that outsider art, you know, filling yeah. in all of the space. Why do people do that? You know, those kind of questions as well. Yeah, and yeah. that's kind of a lovely prompt and a lovely pattern that you've noticed in a lot of contemporary drawers. Uh, my last question for mm -hmm. you is, wh where do you see contemporary drawing now and kind of what shape it's taking, in uh, Sydney in particular? Well, I'm just so pleased that Melinda's created this amazing space, draw space, and mm -hmm. I've become one of the co-founders and board members um it's look i remember the dark days back in the early 2010s when it was only a few of us left at unsw even doing drawing and um a lot of people were sort of moving into other fields it wasn't cool it wasn't sexy and a few of the drawers that i've known for all that time have really been sort of overwhelmed by the fact that finally drawings having kind of a moment as yeah. Eva said this renaissance so I'm overjoyed I, 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 I love drawing it's my first love um, all forms of drawing I yeah. love that it's for everyone it's super democratic it's very non-hierarchical it's very anarchi anarchistic yeah. Um, and uh, yeah I'm, I'm so excited for this slate of amazing exhibitions and oh, yeah. thank you Jeremy no worries thanks, thanks.